What's going on, guys? And welcome back. Ajax is coming out this week, and he's already been buffed up from a 5-5 to a 5-7. But does a new Afflict King have it in him to be a great card, or is he going to join the rest of the Affliction cards and kind of be lackluster? Alex and I are going to break him down, the synergies, and everything you need to know. Now, on top of that, guys, we're also going to be talking about Summer Spotlights. There's a lot of great packages of Spotlight cards, and it depends on what you like to play. And Alex and I are going to rank them in a tier list and also give our overall thoughts on the Spotlights and the new cards. And then lastly, we're going to be talking about the best cards in Snap. Statistic-wise, on when drawn, when in the deck, when played, but also Alex and I's picks for the best cards in the game. We're going to be talking about that all today and more on this episode of the Snapchat. And as always, I am joined by Mr. Alex Kocha, fresh from vacation. Look at the tan on your face, sir. This might be the most tan I've ever seen you. Where did you go? I, you were in a cabin in the woods, from what I heard. Yeah, we were in like the middle of nowhere. Uh, for those that would be interested, north of Peterborough, Ontario, about like an hour something north of Peterborough, Ontario. It's like literally there's nothing there. Like literally we drove onto a highway and then eventually there's this dirt road you turn on and then like there's a cabin on the lake. But I love that stuff. In fact, it, like I think there's this like there's this kind of cottage country in Canada that everyone loves. It's like a thing that we all do here. I don't know if that happens in the States. Like, is there like this classic vacation a lot of people do? Like, my family yeah. always kind of gets like for a week, we get a cottage up north, we go up north, we do some fishing, some relaxing on the water, get bit by mosquitoes, you know what I mean? Yeah, That's yeah. kind of a thing we do here. There's that, oh, well, and I heard you got stung by a bee or stung by bees or about to be stung by bees live on stream. Oh, man. I got attacked. Okay, this is not a joke and there is video proof out there of it. So, I was streaming Twitch drops just for like a few hours just to say hi to everyone. I love Twitch drops because like a lot of the YouTube fam comes out to say hi, right? And so um, I'm, I'm doing it. I'm on this the porch outside, which is hot, kind of hilarious as it is. I'm outside streaming, and I'm telling you, cozy. I thought I heard a helicopter over my shoulder, and I looked, and it was this massive, massive bee, like this bigger than my thumb. I'm not exaggerating, dude. It was the biggest bee I've ever seen in my life. And then I tried to chase it with the camera so people could see, but it buzzed off. And then like half hour later, it buzzed into frame like right beside me. And like, I actually squealed like a little girl and got so scared. Dude, I actually legitimately thought this bee was gonna end me. Like, <laughs> it was so big, I can't explain you. And I, I need to figure out what kind of bee it was, but it was ridiculously massive. Like four or five times the size. I found this out because I went to uh, Florida. So I went to Florida and I did, uh, we both did like videos from like the go or whatever. And I was doing some good pool stuff and I was at the beach, but there was a massive hurricane that hit the States. It hit Texas mainly, but you know, Florida got a good, a little bit of a chunk of it. Uh, and for a long time, we've been going as a family to uh, this part of Florida. Funny enough, where the Truman show was filmed, uh, like uh, the, the actual house, like a little Pleasantville, if you will. And, uh, Bro, I was trying to film this in an actual hurricane. Absolute madness. It's so much so that uh, it I couldn't really do the rest of the videos that I was going to be doing through the week because there was just the wind. It was impossible. But, dude, I found out pretty quickly I made you, man. Because I Do you know what skimboarding is? Have you ever heard of that before? Never heard of it before. Yeah, so it's not... I don't think it's popular. I don't know. Maybe you guys know what it is. Uh, but I was doing it when I was a kid. So essentially, like, when the water comes up, okay... And then it goes back towards the ocean. It leaves a little bit of water left over. And it's this kind of like wooden board that you run and you throw. It, it can be fiberglass too. And you can jump on it and it kind of like glides on the shore. Okay, so it's kind of like surfing on the shore is the best way to put it. It was awesome when I was a kid. Dude, I've never eaten so... <laughs> I, I I never eaten so much sand in my life. I, I did the full... They call it the scorpion, I think. Uh, when you Or the cobra maybe when you do the fall... And you and your you, your legs go like behind your head. It it was bad, Alex. It was it was uh it was pretty bad. But other than that, very relaxing, very happy that we both were able to take a little bit of a vacation and uh definitely got some Marvel snapping in. It was crazy that it kind of lined in with the new season, but here we are and we land on Ajax week and uh or maybe Luke Cage week. I don't know which one it is yet, Alex. We haven't really figured it out. But Ajax, as we kind of thought might happen, got himself buffed up. Before he's even come out. We've gotten a couple cards like that. I think Makari was also like that. Not necessarily a good sign, but we do have a lot to talk about. The newest card. Uh, we, we've got a lot to talk about today in general. What are we talking about on your side of the Snapchat? Cozy when we're talking about Gwenpool and Hydra Bob. Both cards that came out last week. We'll be giving our review of those two cards. We'll also be talking about the worst cards in Marvel Snap. One of my favorite conversations we have every once in a while. And then finally, as always, our Snapchat mailbag. 
Well, Alex, we're going to go ahead and just get right to Ajax here. It says 5-5. Five, five. He is a 5-7. I didn't update the card graphic. But if you don't know his ability, he's ongoing. He's going to get plus one power for each card in play afflicted with negative power. That's on your side. That's on their side. And there's a lot to talk about here, a lot to break down. And, and I've got certainly some thoughts here. I know we and you talked about him a little bit uh, a couple weeks ago whenever we broke down the season. But uh, let's start here. Let's just start with the, the initial star ratings as we always do. What are you feeling now that he is a 5-7, Alex? So, I mean, we came in at 3.5 was where we were at the start. And honestly, I was surprised to see him get buffed with 5-7. We talked about how his original stat line of 4-4 four, four was stronger, and moving yeah. to 5-5 five, five was definitely a nerf from that stat line. But, I mean, his ceiling is so unbelievably high, I think, right? Yeah. However, Luke Cage, being what it is, is an immediate just shut-off valve for half of his power potential. And so maybe Glenn and the team while testing said, you know what, Luke Cage is just its just too much. Like, it's just, it, it shutters the card's launch week. It shutters the card completely. Maybe we give him a little bit of extra power to, to give him a higher floor. I'm still going to stick at the 3.5. I don't like doing the middle measure, but I see this as having a three floor and a four ceiling. Like, the power level's insane. Like, Gilgamesh puts up serious power and this can output higher power in ideal circumstances than Gilgamesh which is pretty notable yeah so I think you are in the right ballpark with this because he is truly one we're gonna have to see play out and test it and it's tough for a couple of reasons number one to your point not a lot of cards in the game have just one card that counters the whole thing it's done there's nothing you can do about it Luke Cage having that AoE kind of ability to cover all the lanes he does that so it's tough to test if you look in the past, Man Thing had a horrible first week. You know, Celine is still not that great of a card. Really, just these affliction cards outside of High Evo builds and, and some Annihilus stuff, it just doesn't work all that much. It's very limited. And so you've got that, but you have kind of this ultimate card, per se, for the archetype. Not only that, we've talked about it before, but Cassandra Nova is coming out, and this could be one of the most important cards to play alongside Cassandra Nova. And that's why we're actually going to be talking about some summer spotlight tier list stuff. We're going to be talking about what kind of decks you guys like to play and what you should save up for, depending on what you play. And if you plan on doing a lot of Cassandra Nova, Ajax stock might go up just a little bit. I need to see him play out. I want to see how this works. I want to see him getting vertical, if that's awesome, right? Ideally, if you've got this negative power spread all over the board, Alex, you just play him in the lane that your opponent's kind of doing okay in still. And then you win that lane and the other ones are negative. And so I want to see this in practice. I need to see it played out. But I think he does have potential. He certainly has synergy options. They're limited, but let's get to a man. What do you want to bring up first in the synergy department? So right off the top, I think there's a very synergistic card in Red Guardian. And I think Red Guardian is going to be very important because a lot of people are going to be thinking, oh, I can Enchantress or Rogue the Luke Cage. And yeah, you could probably do that. But I think that for Luke Cage, Red Guardian probably represents a really good shot at hitting that card. Now, I think if you're seeing it very often, naturally, Red Guardian's going to afflict the card, providing a bonus power to uh, to Ajax. So I do think you're going to have to, if you're going to be playing Ajax stacks, you're going to have to play either Red Guardian or you're going to have to play Enchantress. Enchantress obviously has that blanket effect. And no matter if they have a cheaper card there, like you're going to take out that effect of the Luke Cage. But Red Guardian does have that affliction stat as well, which is really nice for the combo. Yeah, we've seen this uh, Enchantress plugged into High Evo before where you, like, you have that as that answer, so you can do the A-bomb. And it actually was a good performing deck for a while. Remember that back like I don't know, maybe yeah. eight, nine months ago? I see that returning. Rogue is all, uh, obviously an option. If they play a couple ongoing cards, you're kind of screwed at that point. Taking the Luke Cage isn't always the best thing though because then you're hurting your side and so there's this kind of weird thing where enchantress is the main card you probably want to run with the build and we could see return and just in her own right is a cube stealing great tech card right so never bad to have an enchantress that can kind of checkmate a lot of decks things like living tribunal so i definitely agree here like the red guardian as that direct counter to luke cage that's obviously going to be you know your biggest hurdle if you will now i, I want to bring up a point now the thing is, people are comparing him a lot to, let's say, Gilgamesh. Gilgamesh being a on reveal is the biggest difference. So it's not as <laughs> it's not as big of a thing, right? Because you're gonna have one extra turn maybe to to be able to boost him up later on. Whereas Gilgamesh, you have to you know prep up and have him play out. But I do agree, he reminds me of the Devil Dinosaur. Whereas Ajax is the Ronin. You have agency with Gilgamesh. You're boosting your own side of the board for the most part. 
Yes, Ajax, you can do negative affliction on your side, but you are kind of hoping your opponent plays cards and different things like that. But let's just look at the power, man. Let's just talk about the power. 5-7, two points up is not a small amount. That's a major amount, right? 5-7, you can get him, obviously, if your opponent, if you got 12 cards on the board, you're at, what, 519. It's affecting both sides. On a median, you're getting in the 15, 14 range. Guys, that's great. We go crazy for these cards that are hitting 14, 15, a death in power. Ajax is going to be able to get that somewhat reliably, but just how reliably is going to be, you know, the ultimate thing we've got to figure out. So when it comes to Synergy, obviously High Evo is going to be the main build you see him in. And then we're going to see that all over the place. But Alex, I want to say this. I think personally, I'm going to be trying to play him a little bit in the Spectrum builds. I think we have enough cards with Man Thing. A little bit of Jean Grey, a little bit of, uh, what's that guy we both kind of hate, but we love Agent, US Agent, my friend. Another negative pushing card as well. So you've got a lot of these, right? Lizard can be pushed down in negative power on your own side if they've got four. Uh, I have down here Mojo, obviously, to just help out with the Jean Grey, whatever, right? You've got these cards that are going to work with Ajax as a whole, and you don't need to get too crazy with it on top of having the Spectrum bonus as well. That's actually a good call. I had not thought about an ongoing Spectrum deck, but you are right. There's a lot of ongoing cards that push that negative power. And I mean, Luke Cage does too, but <laughs> you don't want them there. But what I will say, though, is that you're right. U.S. Agent, very synergistic card. Man Thing, very synergistic card. And there's a natural curve there. U.S. Agent on two. Man, uh, Jean Grey on three. Man Thing on four. Ajax on five. Spectrum on six, right? Like, there's this very clear-cut uh, kind of t uh, play pattern, which I think is really beneficial. I, I like this. I like this. That's not where my head was at originally, but oh, you got to flash the uh, the fantasy ultimate of Typhoid Mary. I want you to know I bought this too, even though I have not played the card anymore. I know. I still haven't played it anymore, but I brought up Typhoid Mary as another like super interesting piece that we brought up, I think, last week, where it's like, okay, yeah. can you theoretically have two massive lanes kind of and have Typhoid and, and Ajax do the work, or at least Typhoid maybe in like the Jean Grey lane, whatever, you're pushing all that stuff on your opponent. She's naturally just going to be the easiest way to activate Ajax on your side of the board, which means you can have a big Ajax guaranteed with Typhoid. It's what I like about this is this is the first time these affliction decks don't want Luke Cage on your side for the most part. And you're trying yeah. to actually harness this negative power. It's a really interesting idea, the way that like, Luke Cage is a full-on counter, but also you don't want it on your side at all. And you so like the roguing of it, for instance, is a negative impact on you as a whole. I like this. I like when cards have that nuance. It's very fun, right? And um, I, I want to throw something else at you, okay? I think this is really funny. This is really funny. I was doing a lot of like thinking, and I want to try this deck. Now, naturally, I'm going to be going towards Evo as well in my video. I think we're all going to be doing that. I think it's a really natural inclusion. But I got the Hopium. I huffed a ton of it. I want to talk about Supergiant, okay? I know you've gone to the Supergiant well a couple times since we've last talked about it, okay? I have some of your best videos lately, honestly. And what I will say, though, is think about this. Supergiant on four, Ajax on five, and then you can do, like, a Wong Hazmat on six. Or you can do something like uh, Supergiant on four, and then on turn five, you can Hazmat in Mystique, right? And then maybe on turn six, you drop that big boy Ajax. What do you I think, Cozy? Being able to use the Mystique, I've been thinking about the Mystique a lot because I'm like, okay, you could play the Ajax on five and just simply play Mystique, and then wham, you get a uh, Hazman out there. You got two lanes spiking up. At that point, Mystique's going to get about seven to ten power somewhere in there. You got a good amount of cards. Again, it all depends on how many cards are being played out, which we're in a meta where a good chunk is being played out. But the super giant path is super unique. I thought this too, because he's obviously very telegraphable. I think that's his like the worst thing about him, right? Like you, your opponent's gonna know what you're doing. They always do. Um, affliction doesn't have enough under the hood. And so you went the super giant route. I was kind of thinking, hmm, you know what? You could maybe, maybe do the invisible woman route. Same kind of thing, right? He's ongoing, he doesn't care. Same kind of kind of hide that final piece, if you will, and then you boom, you blow it up at the end there and, and, and try to do some calculations. I do think there's going to be some merit to doing the super giant or invisible woman path. I've always liked super giant from a standpoint of like, it's a card that has a defensive ability, but if you can utilize it defensively and offensively at the exact same time, it's like that double edged sword that you get to take advantage of, right? Like you're, you're having your cake and you're eating it too, as they like to say. And so uh, I didn't think of invisible woman. I think you're right though. It has a lot of potential there as well. Cause with invisible woman, they're like, I'm going to play a Cosmo and they snap on you. You're like, okay, bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. that's irrelevant.
Dude, I was thinking of all types of builds while I was on vacation. I'm like, okay, we could bring it back to even Namora, who I just love as a card in general. You're like, all right, maybe you get some Selene stuff going on. You send over the goblins. I don't know. And then you just have a couple big cards on your side of the board. Like, we kind of know that's the path you want to go with. But if we look at the Affliction cards, right? Obviously, we have Hazmat. That's going to be... I don't see a world where Hazmat's not in most of the decks with them. Even if it doesn't super synergize well, you've got this kind of token card that's just checkmate really well, cheap card. But you've got Yellow Jacket, as we've said before, who I think is going to be played to some degree here. Uh, Wasp, as we know with Evo, does work out pretty well. The Scorpion play, and then obviously the 3-1 Cassandra Nova. Guys, we're going to spoil the next section a little bit. This is going to be a Cassandra Nova card, and Cassandra Nova is going to be an Ajax, an Ajax card. It's going to work so well together, especially when you snowball from Scorpion into her, into some of these builds. And so you should have every chance in the book. I think they said that you definitely have a good shot to get Cassandra Nova if you just play the game. Really easy, really good shot. If you plan on playing her a lot, I think that really bumps up Ajax value. I, I like that there's lots of different options as well. Like you have a cheaper option in Hazmat, um, but can I mention uh, Spider Woman? I mean, Spider Woman's a card that uh, that I think a lot of people have forgot existed. Um, but you, I was thinking about like, okay, how do we maximize Hazmat? I do think you're going to see some of these decks running debris because if you debris, you're disrupting their board a little bit. It allows your hazmat to hit a little harder. It also allows your spider woman to hit a little harder. It gives you all of these extra plays while disrupting their board. And remember that negative power on your side, Ajax just kind of scoops it up and applies it on himself, right? So I do think debris might have some merit here as well. Yeah, I thought I had debris in pretty hype on my list too. Just kind of working with the Annihilus shell too. Like, you know, I kind of like the idea of like, okay, you have this Annihilus shell to send things over which is one way to go about it. Ajax is another way to kind of feast off the Annihilus. We could see that built into it. I think people are going to write this card off a lot. Like you're probably listening to this and you're like, yeah, hey, great. Copium train, hopium train, Alex and Kelsey. But here's the thing, guys. It's going to be a tough, it's going to be a tough call. Not only because it's the easiest card to counter this week. We're going to see a lot of counter play, but also because Cassandra Nova comes out not much later so it's gonna be not the easiest card to call on either side of the board i do like the debris call a ton i think the tech cards are important other than what we kind of just listed there you have anything else maybe let's go into high evo just a little bit more there uh in general do you think this high evo cyclops thing abomination build is gonna be uh legit it's hard um, because I think you need to run uh, magic in that deck because with magic, you need that extra turn seven to really kind of bring things down. But you're going to be in a situation where like you're going to run out of one drops like to add Ajax to that deck. You're going to run an abomination as well. That means that you're probably cutting Nebula, right? So and you want to have Misty Knight and Sunspot. There's a chance that Myst uh, Mystique gets added to that deck chance right yep, yep. so then you cut misty knight and now you're getting rid of really good pieces of what high makes high evo high evo you're probably adding the thing in there right you're probably using scorpion the deck kind of makes itself but i feel like there's only 12 card slots and that deck wants like 14 cards and so i'm not quite determined what the best 12 are yet all i know is if this is your style of play you're gonna have fun with it when grandmaster came out i did a hazmat wong debris kind of build with a high evo and i loved it i thought it was so much fun because you don't the thing is about ajax is because of all that pumping of negative power maybe you can get away with luke cage maybe because you don't need a lot of power to win the other lanes you just don't you don't need a lot that deck was doing fine because a bomb was able to be free and it was just nine power on the top there so it'll be interesting to see if those kind of decks do you know come to light with ajax in general my worry is though we really haven't seen a card that they buffed up right before uh, release outside of, I think, like a Lyoth, which was uh, comical. That turned out being really good. You know, like it just that to me says that he was performing pretty awfully and they gave him two. Is that going to really boost him up? I know it's an interesting thought, eh? Like they changed him early. I was actually kind of okay with him prior. Like I actually thought he was probably fine as a five-five going to a five-seven. I mean, that's just that's just bonus. That's just bonus. I do think this card's good. It's also worth noting though that as an ongoing card, it gets hit by a lot of things. It gets hit by Shun Chi. Mm -hmm. It gets hit by Rogue. It gets hit by Enchant. It gets hit by uh, well, not Red Guardian. It's not likely, but it, it, it kind of it allows itself to get smoked by everything. It has the Devil Dinosaur problem. Where it's like Devil Dinosaur can just get 
eaten apart by so many different things. 100%, so. but the only thing I thought about that is you have five and six. So the two times you could play them most likely, right? Outside of one last thing I'll talk about, but five and six. So you play them on five. Okay, let's say they shunk chi that on turn six. Well, what were you going to do on turn six? Probably, you know, drop the hazmat bomb. Unless you did it early, but you're probably... So you're still... They're trading a Shang-Chi with you hazmat on their side of the board, right? So I don't... That's where I'm like, okay, it's maybe not as bad there because you're able to just push out so much. He's just working in this negative build. But my final kind of... What I'm worried about is you... We, we both know, man, these, these Affliction decks just haven't proved themselves. There's been a couple of Limelight metas, just a couple, that have made it. But outside of that, it's really easy to control... It's like magic these days. If a magic deck gets out of control, it's like, cool, just legion it up. You know, you could just shut that down pretty quickly. Same kind of thing goes for here. And that's why Enchantress is going to be important. I'll say this, though. I did play a Sarah Toxic deck for a very long time, early back in the day. And it does seem very interesting because that makes Ajax now a four. You're able to do really interesting things. Obviously, Hazmat becoming a one is hilarious. I used to do this Wong hazmat gambit, just like, screw you, I'm going to win this game kind of deck. But then you can play Wong down for three. That, to me, has some interesting things you could go with. You got the US Agent, like I said before. You have Lizard, some of the same cards in the Spectrum build. But that's another thing that I think could also, you know, kind of shine here. I, Wong is interesting because, like, it has this, like, win more potential. Like, it feels like the greediest card in Snap sometimes. However, I think a major risk, of course, is a turn six Luke Cage, where, like, they just, they completely negate all your negative power. Like, Luke Cage's effect is so strong that I feel like when you're setting up with Wong and stuff like that, the amount of damage and negative power you're putting on your side will not be enough to offset them being completely fine with their play on turn six or five or whatever it happens to be. Like, that's kind of the concern I have. Like, Wong is like, I'm really going deep into something that could just really be counter free cubes. Yeah, and this is the trap. We've talked about this for a long time. People love yeah. big numbers, right? You don't have to get that crazy, right? You don't have to push too much. That's why, like, just a simple man thing might be able to just get the job done really easily and why I went the path of the evil spectrum build because I love the idea of just doing some nice negative stats with ongoing cards and, and going that route. So, hey, listen, guys, you're going for Ajax. If you're going for Cassandra Nova, most likely. And on top of that, if you don't have Darkhawk and Beta Ray Bill, not bad consolation prizes, buddy. Those are pretty freaking good cards to go alongside it. I mean, obviously, Darkhawk especially. Yeah, Beta Ray Bill's kind of fallen off the meta. It had its time in the light. And, uh, I mean, it's a unique effect. Maybe we see it back one day. But, yeah, Darkhawk has to be in your collection. If, if you don't have Dark Darkhawk right now, you're probably feeling pretty rough <laughs> with what the meta looks like. So, you're going to want to roll for it for sure. Well, buddy, we're going to go in and, and talk about this because why this is important. We usually talk about new cards as they come, but they kind of release the calendar uh, ahead of time. We know Young Avengers is next. We're not going to dive in too much into the cards. We'll see what they do. But the next kind of eight weeks of spotlights is one of the more difficult paths to kind of figure out because there's a lot of just honestly great pairings of cards and you have to figure out what's your play style, what do you like? And that's kind of the ultimate, you know, what I think about Ajax is if you enjoy the negative kind of uh, affliction build of archetypes, go for it, man. You're not going to regret it. This is definitely going to be a key piece. These decks are going to be way worse without him. It's I think so. I, I think that's just at least a, a, a for sure thing. So if those are the decks that you like to play, Grab that. You can get the Darkhawk as well. We're going to briefly just talk about some of the spotlights coming up in the summer from now all the way to the end of August. Uh, and then we're going to talk about some of the new cards briefly as well, but not too much. Uh, but we're going to do this in form of a bit of a tierless Alex. We love our tier list here, buddy. Uh, and so we've got some really juicy, scrumptious weeks. S through, uh, I've got D here. We'll get rid of D, just put right to the F. So we have S, A, B, C, F, right? Either terrible, S is great. We're going to try to limit the S and the Fs make a nice little bell curve there's really not a lot to talk about but we are going to start with the week we just talked and that is the dark hawk ajax and uh, uh beta ray bill week where do you have this in terms of this is a good one and this is tough because me and you are opinionated on the archetypes that we like to play but as a whole what do you think it's tricky because beta ray is kind of not that meta relevant dark hawk series four and has likely been targeted by many people and ajax has some question marks around it very easily counter counterable very high ceiling this feels like a B week, uh, not because like I don't think Dark Hawk's amazing. If you don't have Dark Hawk, it's like A, right? Yeah. Like let's be yeah, honest. Yeah. But for most people, I bet you this is falling into the B range. Yeah. So for me, it's tough because I would almost even put it in C, and the sense of yep. 
almost everyone's got to have Darkhawk at this point. Most people do. And so if you want Ajax and you like Affliction, this is kind of like a go the token route week, in my opinion. If you already have Darkhawk, go the token route and, and maybe it's not the worst play because then you're going to get Cassandra for free and then you have yourself the package that you need. That's that's my thought. Uh, I could bump it up to B. Let's see how some of these uh, kind of work out as we, we go through them. Uh, our next week is Copycat. And why I wanted to do this is I wanted to talk about this card because we had some questions about her the trailer wasn't released yet now it's been released copycat does not show your opponent the card that it takes and it's exactly where i thought it was gonna be it was my five star card i think you gave it like four like very high four for you you loved it as well copycat cool obsidian thanos this is a killer week bro Amazing. It's an amazing week. Like, if uh, you don't have Thanos, it's S tier. Um, I think Copycat's going to be fantastic. The fact that it does not reveal to your opponent what you've messed up is remarkable. It's I don't know. This card, I think the card's extremely good. I think the week is extremely strong. Even Call Obsidian, honestly, you're like, bro, Call Obsidian. Listen, that's in a lot of Zoo decks. That's in a lot of different decks. It is 410 power. Like, it is legitly, like, it's legitly, I'm making up words now. It is legit a fantastic card that makes yeah. itself into a lot of different decks. This is an excellent week, my man. Yeah, the, my breakdown on this is Copycat's a must have card. Figure out how you need to get it, okay? If you go for this week and you don't have Cole and Thanos and you want to play that, you've got yourself a nice little package going into it. As Alex said, Cole is the perfect complement card to Thanos, and this really kind of makes that whole machine work. Uh, people aren't playing like crazy amounts of Thanos right now. They're just not. Alex is uh, one of the bigger Thanos fans out there right now, for sure. Like in the last few weeks, I know you are. However, it comes with a great card at that. So it's just kind of this nice. If you don't have Thanos, it's such a good week because you're getting yourself Thanos on top of Copycat as well. I'm going to give it A tier because of these two cards not being played as much, but Copycat being just fantastic, uh, kind of where she stands. Now, after, and I get that Thanos oh, isn't that popular right now, but at the same time, Thanos' return to Marvel Snap's metagame is inevitable. Hey, absolutely. There's no doubt that within the next six months, there's going to be a Thanos meta deck. Like, there's just not. It always has been. If uh, history repeats itself, uh, you are correct there, buddy. Uh, now, our last week is the Cassandra Nova week. And this is funny because we actually do have confirmation. And this is where I wanted to have this conversation. Because I like to call this the catch-up week, the good cards week. This is kind of the, hey, if you're missing these cards, I don't care if there's not a brand new card in this week. It is a home run, bro. Guys, Nico Manaru, Hope Summers Proxima Midnight. These are all three in the same exact cache. This is coming out. Uh, th again, this is what I like to call the good cards week. Last week of the season here. And then you get the Cassandra Nova for free. This is an awesome week, right? For not even having a new card. Yeah, like if you're someone who does not have any of these cards, all of these cards are... I, well, first of all, Hope Summer is one of the best cards in the game. And I think it's proven that... I don't think it's going to get nerfed or anything. Yep. It is absolutely just... It's the best card that will never get nerfed in Marvel Snap. Like it's, it is in such a great investment. Proxima makes discard what it is right now. Like so much additional free power while synergizing so well with the decks. Like discard's not meta right now, but when it is, Proxima's in 100% of those decks. And Nico, how many times do we have to talk about Nico being one of our favorite cards in Snap, right? Like it's, it's, a, it's a must have. Absolutely. I mean, those are the three cards. Like it's one of those that... The way I see it is Deadpool Dino comes out, guys. I'm pretty sure, like, very sure, that there's spotlight keys on the track as you get bubs to get the, the, the car, Cassandra Nova. So you're going to have like two spotlight keys, potentially maybe one. I'm, I'm not sure yet. But you're going to have one or two and maybe more with alliances, maybe giving them, we don't know. But you're going to have a couple kind of like that you weren't expecting. And if you are missing these cards, like what a great place to use them. And if you're not sure, we're going to talk about the next two weeks. So you can be sure if you want to spend it here. But like... I would say probably the worst, yeah, the worst, the bunch is pro, uh, Proxima Midnight there. And even that, it's like, hey, fantastic. You have discard opened up, ready to go. So very, very solid week there. Where do we put it, bro? Where do you put a week with no new card, but just great, like some of the best cards we've seen put together? I wouldn't put it in an S, but I would put it in an A. Like, okay. I'm, I, I can say confidently, but this is also a full skip week for anybody that has these cards, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, it's totally fine. But if you don't, this is a great week to catch up on fantastic cards. Even two of the three, if you're missing, I think, yeah, still very, very strong week. Now, we're going to be talking about what these cards do uh, a, a tad, but we have Marvel Boy as our first week in August, the Young Avengers, uh, and Marvel Boy is interesting. Uh, he is going to be giving your one-cost cards... Um, was it he gives three one cost cards plus one power every turn 
is what he does. Yeah, uh, after each turn. It's yeah. also worth noting that these can change rather significantly, right? We're kind of looking out further ahead, so yes, we'll have to re revisit them on the Snapchat in the future. Yeah, which is why we're barely talking about it, but I do want to just mention it because the cards around it are the ones that are important, and we can at least know if the uh, the base card, like the, the bones of the card are going to be good, and that's what the point is here. So Blob, Marvel Boy, and Red Hulk. I like to call it the big boys week, right? The big boys week. Now, I'm not convinced Blob is going to survive completely in OTA. I don't know. I With the Airstream, I don't think they're going to go Airstream yet. I'm not sure. We'll have to figure that out. That aside, this is a, this is a good week, bro. If Marvel Boy, I mean, it has potential. I think this is a, could potentially be a, a very card. strong card. Uh, Red Hulk's a must-have. I think Blob is must-have right now, especially if you're an Airstream gamer. And I don't think that Blob gets nerfed. I think Blob remains exactly where okay. it is. It's very susceptible to Shang-Chi. It's very, very susceptible to Shadow King. It's also, um, I think they might fix the interaction with Mystique. That doesn't feel like it should be happening like that. That's just my opinion. Maybe yeah. they fixed the code on that. It feels like some spaghetti code that's working with Mystique. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But honestly, I like this week. I, I, I wouldn't go S, but I would definitely go A. Yeah, this is a, and this is why we're doing this. It's like, it, this doesn't help too much as far as like, well, if they're all A, it's like, well, okay, that's why you want to decide what you guys like. Marvel Boy is just, it's insane stats. Squirrel Girl by himself, just with him, is just great. Like all together, yeah. plus one every turn. You're looking great here, okay? He's got a couple cons, but not a lot. Red Hulk, one of the best cards in the game we're about to get to. Blob, obviously very good. If you have Airstream and you don't have Blob, this is obviously a no-brainer. I agree, very strong week as well. The next week, God, these are all good. That's the problem. Wiccan. Now, Wiccan, if you have played, uh, used all of your energy up by the time you play Wiccan, four is a four or five, you're going to get plus two energy for the remainder of the game, allowing you to play some six cost cards. Very interesting ramp card. Uh, I think he's going to be very unique, and, and the shells are going to need him, what he does. The jury's still out. I, I think he's going to be okay. But he comes with Loki and Pixie. I like to dub this Cozy Week. Like, it's just the cards I love. Like, Pixie Man, Loki, a fantastic, fun great cards that do a lot i think wiccan's gonna be a fun card you know at least at the very least here so this is maybe the fun week if you will where do, where do we put this one this is funny i have three things to say one i think that loki has to be in your collection we've been talking about how much yep. we love loki i think loki's fantastic yep. two pixie is always going to be hovering around pretty competitive there's always going to be that one deck that uses pixie where it's yeah. irreplaceable and uh three while I think that Wiccan is probably bad, like this is, I don't think this card's great. Um, I'll, I'll let you know that I did a spotlight cash video that had like, I don't know, 40K views. I called it Wigan. I thought those were G's. So no one corrected me. So apparently no one knows who the hell this is. This cannot be a well-known character because I literally did what? not read those. Wiccan is, okay. So Wiccan and Speeder Brothers, this dude, this is Wanda's kids, bro. You didn't know that? How yeah, is that pot? This is really? Scarlet, which is Wanda's kids. kids? Did, yeah. Did you see WandaVision? Yeah. Yeah, I've seen WandaVision. That's, I love WandaVision. Bro, that's them. That's the kids, man. That that wasn't their names when she... That's, that's the names that she used or that's those names that gave themselves. Those superhero names, man. Oh, Wicked she's and not Speed. like, yo, Speed, come here. Man, you name your kid Speed? What the hell? Yeah, man, yeah dude. I, I, <laughs> better than, like, Marvel Boy, though. I, that would get old pretty fast. If it, Marvel Boy... Anyway, that, they are they are pretty popular, right? They, they're, pretty, they're pretty... But I will say this. Is this a B-Week, man? Loki and Pixie are up there. Loki and Pixie are good. I think Wiccan sucks. But I don't I, know if yeah, he sucks, if, dude. If, I gotta see how I, he plays out. You don't think he sucks? I don't think he sucks, sucks. I think speed's worse than him. Uh, at least there's that. I don't think... We, I think Wiccan is... Dude, he's just one of those cards I gotta see play out a bit. He's got... And That's and funny. or he's a 4-5. I don't think he's gonna stay that. I think he's gonna stay. I think he's gonna go up. I, I'm willing to accept B... Um, just on the merits of Loki and Pixie itself. Yeah, that's what I was going off of here more than just Wicked himself. Now, that takes us to Speed, who arguably is the worst card of the week, um, in my opinion. Uh, and uh, what do you got Speed's ability down? Uh, ongoing, plus one power for each turn in which you've spent all your energy. Yes. So, um, interesting. I kind of like that it kind of works with what you're trying to do anyway, but not exactly insane. But it comes to Jeff and Iron Lad, bro. Jeff and Iron Lad. We would have been losing it about... Five months ago for this week. They knew what they were doing here. They knew what they were doing. Buddy, I think speed is better than Wiccan. Okay. That's fine. I, I do. I, I think it's pretty good. I don't think it's, it's that. A I, okay, I don't want to say pretty good. I'm thinking like maybe three star. Maybe three star. It's a bit of a toss up. I think they're both kind of competing in the garbage Olympics. Like they're not. It's not exactly. 
They're not exact. I don't know. I, it's funny enough. I haven't like dived so far into their kit, so I feel like I might be speaking prematurely. But let's talk about Jeff and Iron Lad. If you if you call them in the middle, is this another B week? Buddy, I mean Jeff and Iron Lad. If you don't have them, you have to get them. I'll also add that Iron Lad's uh, variant has Jeff in it, so it's like double the Jeff. It's it's uh it's what they call Shark Week. Um, if it's you will. Jeff Week, the Jeff Week, yes, the Jeff Week. Okay, so uh, what what do we like, B? It's a B week because I think a lot of people would have targeted Jeff and Iron Lad, right? Like, and the card speed has question marks around it. But those, like, the two cards being brought with the, the new card are what really elevate this week as a whole. But this is a B week. But if you have Jeff and Iron Lad, you're probably skipping or at least waiting till like the very end of the week before committing any resources. And then lastly, we got a tough one here. We got Emperor Hulkling, who's a 611, but copies a text of a random six cost card uh, in the game, not in your deck, but just in the game. Really cool potential. One of my favorites uh, of the month. Might be my favorite of the month. Uh, and it comes with Cannonball and Nimrod. Tough one here. Tough one because of what happened to Cannonball and his play rate in general. And Nimrod got more play with Gwynpool, but is not, it's not played that much. This, to me, is the sea week. Like, it, it has to be. Like, I listen, I have talked myself in and out of Emperor Hulkling oh, so many it. damn times. I don't know how to, like, I don't know what to tell you. Like, I, I, I've i turned myself on to it. I've turned myself off of it. Uh, Cannonball, it, it's it's okay right now because of so many, the blobs? The blobs are being eaten apart by Cannonballs because he can't move. So Cannonball just knocks him out. Nimrod, I think, is still coping a bit. I think even with Gwenpool, I tried. I'm like, ah, it's just better to play Shuri, right? Like, realistically. I don't know, man. This week, I, I have a lot of question marks. I don't think it's a strong week. Uh, if, if Emperor Hulkling, I might convince myself how Emperor Hulkling has been good. I've been as high as four stars on him, as low as two stars on him. Two stars? Dude, know, I man. love him. I love him. I think he's, I think Dude, he's How can you love him, though? Like, it's just... Because he's 6'11", so you just have base good stats. There's very few of those stats that are going to hurt you a ton. We need to see the data of Agatha's going to count in there because they make up their own rules there. We don't know because we have, like, Nick Fury, Dustin Generator... Valentina does so there's like weird things there but just on paper having a 611 Galactus 611 Arnim Zola 611 Leader 611 Magneto is just one less than Magneto I just go through all the cards and either or you have just a good static card for the most part with the upside of a ton of great abilities yeah he could even be 611 and have scars ability yeah right so just right just get a the same thing but you get the, you get two you get two scars maybe i don't know yeah i hate you i feel over that uh what else is there what other abilities are six guys that are just like whoa Doctor i mean doom? doom's obviously yeah pretty awesome yeah doom i think yeah, doom Arnim zola job. leader those are like the whoa and or just red hulk just getting like a little bit of extra that well actually that's the same thing too and i mean it's just a 611 right off the off the top <laughs> hey but hey you get one just start in your hand so why not and the thing is you don't have to play it if it's a garbage one if it's apocalypse okay don't play true it's true like the, 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 the ceiling's potentially high the floor is pretty high too i don't know man you're talking me back into it i've been flip-flopping on this card like crazy so i the only thing i'm i would maybe bump up potentially is this loki pixie week just because i'm looking at it as if you have if you're missing the good key cards go for that last week the big boys go for the the first week in august copycat week is is copycat week that's just what i'll call it it's like yeah you get thanos but copycat's just that good of a card and then you get the fun week of Loki and Pixie. So that's ranking uh, those. And I had I had this prepped up and ready very, very quickly off the top of our heads. Here are the cards that are new. These are the ones that are coming. Funny enough, we were debating them a little bit. So where do you put Emperor Hulkling if you were going to rank him? Oh, I hate this, man. G give him a B. I'm so I'm so middling on him right now. I, I need more time. I, I need more time. I'd have him in A, but I'll let you have a B. You have Wicked in what, D? D. Oh, my yeah, God, dude. D? 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 Yeah, he sucks. Okay, this is Alex. He'll be list. the best part of the season, by the way, because I did that. Copycat is S fast. tier. Yep, no question. Speed, you have C. C. Faster than fast, quicker than quick. Ajax. I think he could be a B. I have, I have hope. I can see him being an A. Honestly, I don't know if Ajax. I think, I think Ajax might be good. And Marvel Boy S or A. Uh, I think he's a good A card, but I, I can see his stats being changed with three one. By the way. Yeah, I think I think Marvel Boy could be an S tier too, to be honest. I think these are the two okay. S tier cards this week. And I think sure. these two so like if you look at the months, these two are the clear cut best. These two have the potential to be really good. Meh. And meh. We'll see what happens. Yeah, poo-poo so, Olympics. Yeah, 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 as I as I said before. Okay. Fun stuff. Want to look ahead because of how confusing some of the spotlights are. Uh and that'll take us to our last category. Now, on your side, we're talking about the worst cards in Marvel Snap. 
And I want to talk about a little bit of the best cards. It's going to be pretty brief, pretty quick here, guys. Uh, but mainly, what I wanted to talk about is, first, if they're in the deck in general, not play, these are specific statistics, all ranks included, all game modes, okay? Last 30 days, what are the most winning cards if they're just in the deck? And then, this one isn't as important because some of these are like, yeah, no crap. But when they're played, which ones are the most winning when they're played? And then a couple of me and Alex's. Now, let's go in the deck, Alex. Just from what you think, uh, they had to have a scene rate above about like 5% or so. What do you think is uh, some of the most winning cards just if they're in the deck? Um, I'm going to say uh, probably Red Hulk is going to be up there somewhere. Okay. You got any other uh, any other ones you want to throw up there? I'll throw out Dark Hawk. Okay. Okay. I'll throw out Erisham. All right. I just keep going. Yeah. John Chi. <laughs> that is a good. Okay. So in the deck, uh, funny enough, a couple of those weren't in there. So in the deck, number one right now is Gwenpool, which is a little bit a little bit convoluted because of the bot stats. That's the only one that mm -hmm. we have to be like, eh, okay, we, we have to see. Although good card, not going to be the best, the best. Uh, but we'll talk about that more on Alex's side. Uh, and then Nick Fury and Erisham. I thought this was hilarious. This is just straight Nick Fury, Agent Coulson. They're they're right there with Quinjet. All those are just like Erisham being Erisham in the game. Uh, and if they're in the deck, they're doing well because you also have Loki involved with these cards. But this is what the statistics say. And this is all ranks. Remember, Blob also obviously being in there. The ones outside of like specific deck builds, though, and that I would qualify as some of the best cards in the game. Nocturne has an absolute insanity rate when it comes to winning, just being in the freaking deck alone. Mockingbird, obviously, is what I like to deem the new Jeff. It's the new card that's in every deck. It's a must-have card. Rogue? Rogue is the number one tech card right now in the game. Number one winning tech card if it's in the deck in the game uh, for tons of different reasons, but that one makes a good amount of sense as well because of Well Blob. And then you have Forge and Loki, which I thought Forge was interesting. Uh, although that does work into a couple of builds that are kind of on the rise that we'll talk about. Now, when played, Alex, when you play the card, so you probably know you have a good chance to win. When you play it down, what are some of the most winning? Uh, can I throw Hello out there? Hello's got to be there. Yeah, number one. Yep. All right. Uh, can we say Ultron? Ultron is number nine, number eight. So, yep, uh, absolutely. Okay, like okay. Yeah, you're picking uh, up what I put down. Okay. Really good played. I mean, uh, Magneto's got to be pretty high, too, because I think Magneto's a solid card. Magneto's right off the list, but I did see him on there. So he's he's up there. I liked it. Okay. What about uh, Eliath at number two? Eliath be number two. Obviously, if you're going to play That's Eliath, higher than I would have expected. If you're going to play him and submit in turn, I think you probably feel pretty good that you're going to win. Uh, most people probably. It, gone are the days, or at least you would hope, of the YOLO Eliath, in my opinion. Uh, but that was number two. Number three was Infinite, which if you get to play the Infinite down, he's been doing what he's been doing. You just get the big power. Onslaught. Onslaught. And I think that just has a lot to do with Living Tribunal. Yeah, I mean, honestly, with Tribunal Onslaught, like, I, I can't believe people stay in those games sometimes. I, I, I play uh, Tribunal every once in a while. You just have that, like, super yoked spotlight variant that I really like. I just like to stare at it, even if I'm, you know, whatever. I, I just, I just got to tell you, Onslaught's a winner. Definite winner. But it's also a card that I feel like... Uh, it finds his way into a lot of greedy ass shells that are like the decks that like have really low win rates, but relatively high cube rates or even just negative cube rates too, but they're fun to play. Bro. I, the, I, it's funny you say that because for a while I was like, you know, I used to do this. Uh, I think Binks tried to play it once after uh, I, I made it, but it was like doing this like wave and you would wave out either Sarah or something early. And essentially what your goal was, was to play devil dinosaur or Ronin. You play onslaught on top of that. Um, I'm sorry. You play onslaught, you play devil dinosaur or Ronin. Then you taskmaster that. So I was like, oh man, what about Ajax? You could do that with a Ajax potentially of doing that. Funny enough, Taskmaster is uh, right after Onslaught as well as Odin, which makes sense. These kind of completion cards, you know, to get the combo Wombo out. Noel, Surfer, and Tribunal are the most win played. No Galactus. That's surprising to me because Galactus feels like if you're only playing if you think you're going to hit him, right? I think that just shows how many <laughs> people whiff on Galactus plays probably. Like that's the only thing I can imagine. Now, if you were to say in your book, some of the best cards in the game to you. You just listed some of them off. Red Hulk, obviously. I think we could both have him. Dark Hawk. Who else you got on there? Uh, Magneto's the one that surprised me is not there. Yeah. Like Magneto's an absolutely amazing one. Shang-Chi not making that's fan uh, really surprising to me. Uh, I feel like people pretend like Shang-Chi does not exist. And so like punching people out, taking cubes. I mean, Shang-Chi has to be one of the higher win rate cards. I, I'm sure it'd be in the top 20 for sure. 
Uh, those are the biggest surprises for me personally. Yeah, I think Mockingbird, Loki, those are always there. Arishim is just strong. And guys, if you don't want to get Ajax this week, roll the dice. Maybe you'll just get him in your Arishim deck and 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 roll the roll the dice there. But either way, it's gonna be interesting. I it's just gonna be. I I see us talking about uh, Ajax in review, the final rankings next week, and we're gonna be like, man, he's not that great. But it's also because it's the week of his arrival, kind yeah. of doomed to fail a little bit, right? He's gonna have a really hard time this first week. And remember, Annihilus had a horrible first week. Yeah. Right. Like it's very hard to evaluate these cards in a vacuum on their first day, their first week. And that's why if you're someone who's trying to like, you know, be cognizant of their resources, waiting until the Sunday or Monday to determine whether or not you're going to commit your resources is important. Like getting caught in the FOMO of, I mean, I don't know how much FOMO there's going to be with Ajax, but you know, like there's been examples of cards where there's a lot of FOMO and just a little bit of retrospective would have saved you some tokens. Well, we've got an OTA later this week. We're bound to see some fun stuff in there. Maybe Hydra Bomb, but we'll talk about that here in just a moment on Alex's side of the channel where we rank Gwynpool Hydra Bomb, final rankings, worst cards in Marvel Snap, and the Snapchat mailbag. Thank you guys for hanging out and coming to another Snapchat. And uh, until the next one, happy snapping, guys.